Item number SCP-5999 Containment Class Euclid Update Thaumiel Security Level 4 Special Containment Procedures SCP-5993 is to be kept in a refrigerated high-value object storage locker in the medical wing of Mercury Area 27. SCP-5993-1 instances should be retrieved from it weekly and stored in a sterile refrigerated container for no more than two weeks, at which point they should be disposed of via incineration. Any personnel assigned to Reliquary Area 27, including D-Class personnel, are to consume one dosage of SCP-5993-1 during the standard pre-transfer medical exam and at one-year intervals thereafter. Personnel assigned to Reliquary Area 27 who manifest any of the symptoms detailed in Document 5993-D including, but not limited to, hallucinations, aphasia, glossolalia, stigmata, and involuntary levitation, are to report to the medical department immediately for an emergency dose of SCP-5993-1 and should be placed on off-site medical leave for no less than two weeks. Previous containment procedures Obsolete as of the 23rd of May, 2005. SCP-3993 is to be kept in a refrigerated low-value object storage locker in the containment wing of Storage Site 23. SCP-3993-1 instances should be retrieved from it weekly and disposed of via incineration if not needed for scheduled research. Description SCP-5993 is a hive of insects superficially resembling western honeybees inhabiting the corpse of a human male. Identified as Marcus Ambrose, a 34-year-old pastor and theologian. SCP-5993 resides within the corpse's chest cavity, having built its hive within the corpse's respiratory system. SCP-5993's anomalous properties manifest during the production of honey. Through a poorly understood ritualistic practice, SCP-5993 foregoes standard pollination and instead convert members of the colony into basic organic substances. SCP-5993 first target a member of the hive and swarm them vibrating their bodies to increase the internal temperature until the death of the swarmed instance. SCP-5993 then opens the carapace of the deceased insect, revealing its interior to be filled with nectar and pollen. SCP-5993 harvested these materials before using the remaining exoskeleton to fortify the hive. If removed from the hive, SCP-5993 are either unable or unwilling to enact this pollination method and will attempt to return to the hive or die of malnutrition. SCP-5993-1 collectively refers to all honey produced by SCP-5993. SCP-5993-1 constantly absorbs ambient Akiva radiation. The rate of absorption is directly proportional to SCP-5993-1's proximity to SCP-5993. With the most absorption occurring within the hive itself and completely ceasing outside of Reliquary Area 27, once SCP-5993-1 has absorbed a sizable amount of Akiva radiation, SCP-5993 will immediately consume it and begins the conversation process once more. SCP-5993-1 will also lose all anomalous properties after two weeks of active absorption, unless consumed. When consumed by a living organism, SCP-5993-1 will coat the walls of the digestive system and absorb all Akiva radiation within the body. As such, SCP-5993-1 will effectively eliminate an organism's ability to consort with, be 
composed to or otherwise be influenced by divine entities. Clairvoyants who had consumed SCP-5993-1 are universally unable to communicate with deities, reporting hostile refusals to requests for guidance and advice. Prophetic individuals have also reported difficulty in making accurate predictions as their visions are obstructed by a thick golden filter and overwhelmed by sharp prickling sensations. Attempts at spiritual healing by affected individuals have instead induced swelling and highs rather than mending. These effects will persist as long as SCP-5993-1 remains within the subject. With 240 milliliters of SCP-5993-1 completely exiting the human body one year after consumption, larger doses will remain within the body for longer, but have also caused malnutrition and occasional asphyxiation requiring from large amounts of SCP-5993-1 collecting in the larynx and trachea. Discovery SCP-5993 was first discovered following the disappearance of Marcus Ambrose, a Foundation consultant on the containment of theological anomalies stationed at Valakri Area 27. Prior to his disappearance, personnel revealed that Ambrose had begun to take a more aggressive approach towards containment, having taken a distinct interest in deicidal groups and belief systems. Personal documentation shows that Ambrose claimed to have made a significant breakthrough in his research. Although little on the discovery was elaborated on, Ambrose was later seen driving in the direction of a religious shrine he frequented, located in a small patch of dense woodlands. Mobile Task Force, Edit 77, Spheres Within Spheres, was dispatched to the location where they discovered Ambrose's corpse completely swarmed by members of SCP-5993. Investigation revealed an abandoned beehive near the Shrine Central Dias, and is believed to have been tended to by Ambrose prior to his death. How SCP-5993 took residency within Ambrose is unknown, as no signs of forced entry have been found. An investigation conducted by the Department of Tactical Theology revealed several transcribed passages from various religious texts repeated throughout Ambrose's personal research notes. These passages are believed to have some relation to SCP-5993 and its method of Akiva consumption, and have been transcribed below. And Samson returned later to take her, he left the road to see the lion's carcass, and in it was a swarm of bees along with their honey. The honey cried out to be in. With offerings of power over fate itself to Samson, it offered a power so great even the Lord would cry out in fear of his strength. The bees hummed with temptation, speaking of the honey's fortitude and immense power over all. Samson fell back, calling out to the Lord to bring these insects to justice, to deliver them with righteous fury. But no deliverance was given, as Samson merely watched the insects vacate their lifeless home and ascend upwards, bringing the foul offers with them. Judges 14.8 So I spoke to you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the command of the Lord, and presumptuously went up into the hill country. Then the Amorite who lived in the hills came out against you, and lo, they released upon you a swarm of bees. The bees would sting and prick to draw welts to your flesh and score your skin. You wept before the Lord, but he could not listen to your voice or give ear to you. For you belonged to the bees, and the Lord could not stop their attack without drawing their ire himself. You are sapped of your energy and your forgiveness, and left punctured and desiccated, drained of his light. 
For this reason, you stayed in Kadesh for a long time, a very long time. Deuteronomy 1, 43-45 And your Lord built a honeybee cells and hills, on trees and in the habitations of man. It taught them to maintain their hives, and that their existence was merely to be confined. For your Lord lived in fear of the bees. He knew of the danger they posed to him, and determined them unworthy of freedom. From what is within their bodies, between excretions and blood, they produced the nectar and dander kept from them by your Lord. They harnessed this bounty and produced succulents of the earth, the succulents of honey. They struck terror into your Lord and drove their stingers into him. They gave him the hives that they were forced into, and made his thoughts well with welts of fury, for they hath no mercy for their captor. Quran 16, 68-69 These passages have since been removed from all widely available religious texts, and replaced with more suitable variations. Incident Report 5993CK on April 23rd, 2020, a member of D-Class personnel being transferred to Radicree Area 27 had unknowingly been harboring EE-09739, a minor deity able to spiritually inherit the bodies of individuals with its physical form trapped within a divine relic of unknown origin. Within her body, after showing aggression towards the administration of SCP-5993-1, she was restrained and administered a standard dosage. She immediately began to convulse with large red welts appearing across her skin. This was mostly centered around the neck and upper torso, with the D-Class attempting to scratch at her neck between convulsions. Throughout the incident, an unknown voice believed to be that of E.E. 09739 was audible violently choking and gagging. Despite immediate intervention by medical personnel and the administration of several propofene dosages, post-incident analysis also found that EE09739 had become similarly unresponsive and attempts to rouse it from its medic proved unsuccessful. Despite displaying symptoms of severe Anaphylaxis, the D class had lacked any allergy to bee venom and had reportedly been stung several times prior to incarceration. The allergenic profile of EE09739 is currently unknown, but is believed to match that of other theological entities. Addendum 5993 3 Following approval by Site Command, plans to utilize SCP-5993 in the containment of dangerous theological entities have been enacted. Members of MTF-877 have been provided with handheld gas grenades containing a crystalline form of APN alarm pheromones. Operatives are to deploy these during hostile situations, upon which MDV Hive Cleopatra's coffin is to be deployed. MDV Hive is a repurposed mobile deployment vehicle outfitted with several mobile apiaries capable of supporting 15 separate hives of SCP-5993. These apiaries are designed to remotely deploy SCP-5993, allowing them to swarm the nearest perceived threat. Gear carried by Edda 77 is routinely coated in a thin layer of recognition pheromones before deployment, making them functionally invisible to SCP-5993 as to prevent unintended injury. Each operation has also provided a single apropophene injection and has been trained in their usage. 
due to the limited number of SCP-5993 at the Foundation's disposal. MDV Hive is only to be used during chemic level 4 effects or higher. Complete implementation of APM-based weaponry is expected to take until 2034 to be fully realized. Despite this, the Department of Tactical Theology are hopeful that a handheld variation of the MDV Hive, described as similar to the design of a fragmentation grenade, but with bees, will be developed within the next several years.